anything. That's why they hated. Uh, what was it they hated so badly? Um, the wrestler. They didn't like the wrestler because he was outside of that a scope of things. Well, I want to <laughs> say too, and I could be wrong about this, but speak to M. Night Shyamalan's movies. Yeah, he sits outside of anybody's kind of. Uh, right. And again, I say that like. I don't know how how deep it actually goes, but it doesn't seem like anybody gives him any input from a financial standpoint of what he should right. put in his movies. Right. Well, it's you like, know, movie, like uh, Crash. You remember that movie, Crash? Mm-hmm. That, that operated outside of the guidelines um, as well. And when it won, I think it won Best Picture that year. Didn't it win Best Picture, I think? I can't Something. remember. Anyway, um, it got golf clap. I'm trying to think of an analogy here for this and it's tough, but it's like, okay. So you have a charity golf fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Anybody can play fun. You also have, but you also have (laughs) tiger woods in it. You have, uh, Phil Mickelson, you have all these great pros that are playing in this thing, but you also have some guys that just come off the street and they're drinking a, you know, a 12 pack of Natty Light in there. In there. And let's right. just say one of those guys, not a pro, not anything, plays golf on the weekends with his buddies. He wins the fun rate. He wins the tournament. You know, everyone's kind of like, oh, that's spectacular. That's wonderful. But, you know, you should consider going pro. You know oh, yeah. what I'm saying? And, and then that guy's like, nah, man, I just I just play this for fun. Right. You know, and I, I bet some money on the side and I won some off my buddies, so I'm good. Yeah. I feel like that that could fall into the in, into kind of what we're talking about in the movie business, especially with indie movies, how you come out with something that that isn't a part of their uh their group. No, I, I and they're don't. like, Well, it was good, it was great. Well, well let's see what they do next year. You know, let's get them in next year now that yeah. we know that they exist. That's yeah. how I feel like that that amateur fun golfer would would be. It's like, hey, you know what? Why don't you go on tour with us next year? And he's yep. like, no, 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 no. I don't want to be I don't I don't need a jacket. You know, I, I just yeah, I feel you want to make a living playing a little bit of scratch golf. That's how it is. I think, man, what an analogy. Well, I should write <laughs> movies. You should. <laughs> Good grief. I had a friend like that. He he's this artist. Um he just made crazy sculptures and things like that, like just what he wanted to make. And, but he didn't want to like make any money off of it. And he told me, you know, he said, when I start making money off of it, it's not art to me anymore. It's not because I'm not enjoying it. I'm just doing it for me now. And if somebody wants it, they can have it. But I, I don't want to like start doing things for people, which I get that. Well, don't get me wrong. I would love to just make big, big, big money off my ideas. <laughs> I, I'm not a, I'm the, I'm the biggest fan of people selling out. <laughs> that means they made it. That means they made right, it. Right. And uh, yeah, I get you. But I also don't think that you lose the, I don't think you can lose the, or you should lose the, uh, the intent of what you do. Nope. I got you. Well, and you talking about the machine earlier, and I was going to say this, I think it's more like a beast even, um, the 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 machine is the beast and the beast watches you right sure watch your childlike enthusiasm in this business and the, you don't look it in the eye see you you don't look the beast in the eye because you don't really recognize it that way yet but it's watching you closely to make sure you don't skew from your place right and the minute you start looking the beast in the eye is when things change. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's it's mm-hmm. like that, I think, to me. I'm like, oh, I see what you're doing now. I see you watching. Well, yeah. at the end of the day, it's all just to make money. It is, and that's what the Oscars are. They, the Oscars, I don't think this is arguable at all, um, is a marketing tool. It's one big commercial for all these movies that nobody saw. I mean, I didn't, I didn't see Coda. No, I'm gonna watch it though. But why? When did you know about it? I knew about it a few weeks, like not a few weeks, but a few months ago. I didn't. 
Never. I didn't know what it was about uh, up until I really, because I remember when it came out on Apple and I was like, what is this? Yeah. And I was like, ah, just not in the mood for it. I felt that way about a lot of the Oscars this this go around. Like King Richard, Mm -hmm. I was like, eh, just not interested right now. I wasn't interested either. I, and night, I watched Nightmare mm-hmm. Alley because I wanted to see, because mm-hmm. they were already hyping that one up. And oh, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Eh. And, and so far, I think Coda was the coolest one because it's it's a deaf movie or, or a movie for people hard to hear. Like it's it was it's actually really cool when you when you look at it and you're like, oh man, right. And and so for me, not seeing it, but knowing what I know about it, I'm like, heck yeah, the dude that won signed his entire acceptance speech. Like it was dope. And I was like, oh man. And I guess that also comes from a you know, seeing people that are differently abled or disabled or however you want to call it. Right. I can relate to that myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe not to the extent that I'm deaf or blind, but right. I think it's really cool to see people that in other uh on other sheets of paper are like ah come on you you can't hear you, you'd never be an actor or whatever and then you're like oh but you just won so yeah uh you can take that and shove it you know like i, <laughs> I like that and i think yeah. that's what i think and so for me watching coda will be cool because i'm like man good for the, good for these folks sure come out here and tell a dope story but again and it's the the way i heard about it was that i watched a video on youtube was uh, Spider-Man uh, No No Way Home, how it should have ended. You know those cartoons? Have you watched those? It's no. the series of how it should have ended, but it's all animated. Uh, and they're just, they're funny. So it's like, this is how this movie should have ended. Well, this is a take on the Oscars and who got nominated for what. And Spider-Man, all three of them are like, Nope, didn't get nope, no nomination for that. No nomination for that. And they go down the list. Here's what got nominated. And they're like, that movie? Blah. And then they got down to Coda. He goes, Coda. Actually, that's a pretty good movie. That should probably win. That's what it says in the video. But that's where I first heard of Coda. I'm like, I don't I don't know what Coda is. And I'm not living in a nutshell. You know, I'm not right. I'm not. I see, I mean, I see what's happening, but I mean you don't hear about certain movies like Parasite. I didn't hear about Parasite till uh, Oscar night. I'm like, yeah. I don't even know what Parasite is and it one movie. So I'm supposed to go watch it now. It's a marketing tool. Right? Sure. Well, and I thought that last night too, where I was like, oh man, all these are going to get a huge bump yeah. on these streaming services. You know, uh, yeah, well, and which, which is normal though. It's just like anybody went in a Grammy is. or whatever that, like they're gonna go, you, you're totally gonna go get um, Jay Z's new album because he won a Grammy for it. Or Kanye West at the time, you know, when Kanye West yeah, won Grammys, if you hadn't heard it, you were gonna go get it, you know? Yeah. Which whatever. I. Yeah, Again, I awards, mean, I just awards are the are, are, are. I think that's the greatest line to me. Awards are for the people that want them, you know. Yeah. Well, I remember there was one year. Um, here in Knoxville talking about the theater awards again, which, I mean, I thought, I don't know. I think I, I went to maybe two of those that they had. I was nominated for something, which I didn't win. Um, it was, and it was, I remember the guy that was up for best actor. So best actor was sitting in front of me and it was from the same show. So he played Seymour and I was best, um, what is it? Supporting. Supporting. Sorry. Uh, I don't know anything about acting. That's what I thought. You don't know how to act. Same here. It's my Franco thing. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, he's sitting in front of me and they, they go down the list and I didn't win. And then he didn't win. And then our show didn't win anything. But the thing that won was, the people who were part of the coalition, it was their shows that won. <laughs> oh, and he hundred percent. He turns around and looks at me like, "You believe that?" Or home he's more, more like, "Mm-hmm." Just what we figured. Yeah, home cooking exactly. So I've been uh, to festivals that won that way because 
the college helped sponsor. Yeah. And so the film from the college won. Oh. And it was like, oh, okay. I remember that. <laughs> like, Is that right. the one you're talking about? Uh, We're at the same I one. I don't know. I, I was at a, one of these film competitions where it, it was weird because I got up, like, I had to go to the bathroom. So I picked one that I thought, yeah. Oh no, this I'm, is a different. This is a different one. Oh okay. But well, I, you keep going. I, like, I, I, I was at this. Yeah, I was at this one, and I, I, I like kind of go to the bathroom, and I, one started, and I knew within 10, 15 seconds that yeah, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and so I got up, I watched it again, you know, for a minute or so, and I, I was like, ah, right, good, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. It won the whole thing. It won. Mm -hmm. And it was friends from the college where the people went who put the thing on. Yeah. And it wasn't even local to us. And I was like, get out of here, man. Get out of here. So, yeah, it was great. Great fun. But I remember at the theater awards one year, everybody had to be, um, represented. Like if you were a theater group and you paid, whatever dues to get the newsletter or whatever every year from the coalition. Oh, we're part of the coalition. So we're paying $25 a year to get the newsletter. I don't know what they did, but anyway, when you do that, when you're taking these, these memberships or, or whatever from groups, you kind of got to include groups in your stuff. Mm-hmm. So if you do a, if you do an award show and you cut one of the groups out and they're paying you, well, they're not going to pay you next year. I mean, they're not going to pay you. And, um, at least that's how I feel about things. But there was a show that I wrote that year that was presented by a local company. Uh, it was produced by a local company. It was presented at the Museum of Art in town. And we tried to get rights to these two other shows. We were going to do uh, Cotton Patch Gospel, which was on tour at the time. So it couldn't. they wouldn't give us the rights to that. And then we were going to try to do Smoke on the Mountain to... It, we wanted something that was Appalachia feeling to go along with the exhibit that was at the museum, which was Thomas Hart Benton. And he had painted all these, you know, he did the Appalachia trail and he wrote a lot and painted a lot. And that was the exhibit that was going on. But anyway, um, so then we couldn't get the rights to that because somebody in middle Tennessee wouldn't let us <laughs> different story. But, um, Anyway, I offered up one day. I was like, well, I could just write something. And then the producers were like, okay, go for it. So I wrote this original piece, original, uh, you know, semi-quasi musical about Thomas Hart Benton and Appalachia and everything and all this. And so I wrote it, directed it, and um, people really enjoyed it. It was fun. People enjoyed it. So then the awards came around. And it was nominated for best lighting. Oh man. And the person that's name was down for it. Didn't even do the lighting. (laughs) And, and I thought those, the lighting was just like cans that were on stage already. Nobody did anything because you couldn't in that space. You couldn't reach them. They were in the ceiling and you couldn't reach them. So it was like, well, you just got to do what you got to do, you know, fade here and up here. And I remember telling him, like, congratulations, man. You got nominated for best lighting. And he said, I didn't do lighting. I, didn't do yeah. <laughs> I, said, I know you didn't do lighting. That's, a, that, that's just that thing that's even more proof of, like, almost how bogus it all is, you know, at the yep. end of the day. Like, the bottom line of any award ceremony like that is you're just kind of like, okay. And I right. think that's part of losing the magic is you realize that it's a business. Right. And... And so you're like, okay, like they, like the, it was great. We can't just let, we can't let this production just sit here and not get noticed. Put it down for lighting. <laughs> exactly. Put it down for best lighting. That way, you know, hey, know. <laughs> that way, that way they're, they're nominated, you know, and they can tell their friends, <laughs> but we know who's going to win this regardless of how good it is or not. Right. You know, okay. um, <laughs> oh, well, if you're not in that circle, you're not in that circle. Well, and I just found out in an email just now, Jeff, that oh. uh, I didn't get a part in a movie that I auditioned for. And the casting director 
said that I was amazing. Oh. And that that sent it to a couple other people and they were like, he's incredible. Da, 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 da. But the oh. directors didn't take any they they didn't say a word about it. And so I didn't get it. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. And I'm just like, whatever. The movie's probably gonna suck anyway. What what do you bet one of their nephews gets the role? Well that's what that's what uh <laughs> That's what the casting director said is like, and, and who knows who's going to get this part? Probably some Yahoo that they know from, from wherever. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, whatever. There was a thing. On, I don't know why I was on TikTok, but I was on TikTok scrolling. They see me scrolling. Oh um, man. Trying to catch you riding dirty. <laughs> and it was, um, it was, uh, it was titled. What was it? Um, um, Oh gosh, what do you do that when you're when you give um, when you take somebody from your family or your friends and you give them the role or you give them the position? Nepotism. This was thank you. I couldn't think of it. This was called nepotism babies. It's a Hollywood, big word around our house. We talk about it daily. Hollywood nepotism babies is what this link was. Oh man. And, dude, uh, Timothy Chalamet, is that his name? Mm-hmm. His his mom is a writer. His dad is a director. Um, it, who else was it? Uh, Amy Schumer's. Oh uh, gosh, is her, Chuck it, Schumer's niece? I mean, you know, <laughs> good for him. Uh, you know, I know, but I think you should I, have to like wear that. Maybe you should have to wear it like a NASCAR. Oh, Gwyneth Paltrow. I mean, like you can go on, man. Like, oh gosh, yeah, everywhere. Well, and you we've think, talked about this before, and, and you think it like. I think the funny thing is, is that a lot of these actors don't want people to know because they want the notoriety that they did it themselves. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And that's an understandable thing, but there's a reality there that's like, eh, come on. Well, in Christian Slater, his mom was casting director. You know. Yeah. So I mean, so when you look, yeah, when you look, <laughs> I like to you just said that. Oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> I like Christian Slater, but. I, well, see, that's how I felt about the Will Smith, Chris Rock thing is I was like, man, I like both of these guys. Right. So, and they like each other. And, and to pick a side on it all, like, they give, like America's doing. You don't have doing. to. And I'm like, oh, I like Chris Rock. Did he make fun of dude's wife? Yes. Did dude come up and slap him in the face? Yes. Were either of them right in the situation? <laughs> no. <laughs> they no. was staged. They was all right because it only it, people are going to watch that movie now that he won the award for. People are going to go watch his show that you said. What is it? The <laughs> Bel Air or whatever that remake, yeah. reboot, whatever. Not reboot, remake. What well, I don't know what to call it. But, but what are they uh, watching of, on Chris Rock? Are they going to go back to everybody hates Chris. Well, Ooh, hey, that was listen, a good joke, kind of. Think about this. The other clip that I've seen today, besides the clip of the the stage combat smack and, you know, him getting into his lines about his wife uh, and then proceeding to win the award and then breaking down crying, saying that he supports defends Rich King Richard defending his family. And I'm like, oh, OK, I got it now. I see. I see the script. The other clip was when Chris Rock was in drag on. Fresh Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith. That's the other clip that's been playing, and I'm like, yeah. So people are going to go watch Fresh Prince. They're going to go watch the original, and they're going to watch the new one. This is a. I mean, it's brilliant. Really. This is the Will Smith show, man. And Chris Rock's going to get some residuals just because people are going to watch that episode like crazy. I'll say this: another uh, buzzword of the night was genius. People oh. from genius around. Used to, it was brilliant. Brilliant. You know, for, for a long time, people would be like, it's such a brilliant film. You're such a brilliant blah, blah, blah. Last night, it was genius. You're oh, a awesome. genius. Oh, you're a genius. <laughs> Aaron Sorkin, you're a genius. Genius. I was like, oh, that's the word of the year. Uh, yeah. But I, like I said, I used to want to be in that cool crowd. I, I used to think that getting the, $25,000 gift bag at the door. Oh, apparently uh, they're, they were a million now. Oh. Yeah. Oh. And supposedly... The, 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 the swag bags were a million bucks a pop. Unbelievable. A trip to Scotland in each one of them. 
<laughs> hey, you know, if you want everything to be debunked about viruses and everything else, just watch Hollywood and they'll tell you exactly what you need to know. A million bucks going to these people who already have a million bucks. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, I wouldn't turn down one of those bags up. I I wouldn't either, but I don't think they're going to invite me anymore. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'd rather yeah. ride in the van. I'd rather ride in the Econo Line van with the wood panel walls and the green shag carpet with the couch that folds down to a bed in the back of it with three or four dudes that have been toting their own equipment around for 30 years driving a hundred miles to make 50 bucks to play a gig at the national guard armory for some, you know, banquet for some veterans. I'd rather be in that van. Good grief. You just like the journey. Bam. (laughs) I, on the other hand, like the destination (laughs) myself. Do you? Uh I, I love the journey, man. I love yeah, the journey. I, I, for a long time, listened to people say that and whatever, and I was like, nope, not me. I hate the journey. Unless it's like a camping trip or something of that sort, either way, I still love getting to the campsite and setting up my tent yeah. and fire. Um, driving to these areas or like a road trip to me, it's a different destination every day. So. Right. I'm cool. I, I'm I'm not a, it's like the journey is fun on road trips, mm-hmm. but the journey in life is not. I like the destination. That's me. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I love I love the ending. I don't know. I <sighs> I've caught the car a couple of times in my life. I'm the dog chasing the car, and I caught it, and then I didn't know what to do with it. Oh, <laughs> straight out of the dark night. I'll is it? it? I'll take it. I'm like <laughs> well, a dog is. chasing tires. And if I caught one, I wouldn't know what to do with it. That's true, though. That's a great... You know, the Joker was so right on so many levels. Oh, every every one of them. And I think that's what made... <laughs> I think it turned around, though. I think that's what, that's what Heath Ledger's Joker did, is it turned around the idea of heroes and villains. Yeah. You know? And... and yeah. I mean, who who would have thought that the Joker would be the more um, relatable character for real, you know, and it to was, me, that's amazing. Yeah, but that's amazing to me. Cause then you start looking at real life and you're like, huh? Huh? Yeah. I mean, I don't condone how he handled a couple of things, but <laughs> no, sure. Uh, his, the mentality was there to be. Yeah. That seems, you know, I'm trying to help you not trying to hurt you i'm trying to help it's not a it's not about the money it's about sending a message the money i only burned my half yeah 100 <laughs> percent. like to have the have the ability to do that yeah he on the other hand i'd be like no, give me that half and while i'm at it i'm gonna take care well, of it and the thing is the money he was only stealing what the mob had stolen he was being robin hood the mob in the bank that he broke into in the beginning was the mob was bank. the mob bank. Yeah. They had gotten all the money illegally and stolen it yeah. from people. And he was just getting it back again. That movie switched it. It did, man. And we saw it at 2 a.m. Opening we night. We did. A lot of people don't know that. That's a fun fact. Trivia one day when we're famous at the Oscars, people are going to be searching yeah. and they're going to go, oh, my God, Jeff and Lynn know each other. Yeah. When I'm sitting <laughs> in between Will Smith and Chris Rock <laughs> and they're both smacking you and we're both giving daps and, and your, like, yep. your movie nobody's heard of is now being watched over and over the next day. And everyone's <laughs> calling me a genius, <laughs> a brilliant genius. He's a brilliant genius. He's a brilliant genius. Buzzword. It's awesome. Oh, goodness. You know how I feel about that, man. It's in it, it, my whole life. I've been that way about those buzzwords because I've had friends that like I went surfing with and, and uh, it was my first time like surfing. And he used all these terms when we were out in the water that I was like, Ugh. yeah, like, bro, we went to the same high school <laughs> and you're right. And he's like this pro surfer all of a sudden. And I was just like, good grief. What, 
a surfer magazine. Yo, man, you got to lean into the swell. You got to lean into the swell, man. And no, you don't ride the whitewash or the white cat. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you mean the wave that's already broken <laughs> towards me? I got you. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> you know, but that that's where I started to notice that when people use terminology like that, it also falls in line with people that like, and my dad is so guilty of this. I love him, but like he'll, he'll put emphasis in words like mature. Oh yeah. And I'm like, Bruce, come on, man. It's mature. <laughs> exactly. Just say mature. Just say mature. mature. Or like I've heard people, heard people uh, put an accent on mozzarella, you know, like mozzarella. Mozzarella. And you're like, hang on, hang on a minute. <laughs> you're like, yeah, man, I made this this spaghetti. I put the sauce on it, and then I add the mozzarella. And you're like, whoa, <laughs> where did this accent come from? And that, that's stuff, that stuff drives me bananas. You know what I'm? Because yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Or man. when people start talking about wine, and they're like, oh, it's got accents of oak. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just saw you pound a bottle of 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 terrible uh, bottom shelf vodka that tastes like <laughs> uh paint thinner and now you're describing a, the oak flavor as an oaky afterbirth yeah and you're like good <laughs> grief <laughs> dude i grew up okay so i always felt like i was not i was an alien in my family like mm-hmm. I, everybody thought i was really weird anyway because i didn't i didn't do the things i was supposed to and so I remember my mom and dad arguing, not like fighting, but it was a, it was a discussion one day about the word mature, it's like mature, mature, mature <laughs> and mature. And I'm, I'm over here going, what, what, <laughs> why is this? I guess, in the I'm, conversation? Neither. I guess yeah. I'm not mature or mature. <laughs> and what was the other word that they used to say? Oh gosh. Oh, 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 this is a good one. Humble, right? H U M B L E. Humble, but they pronounced it humble. Humble without the H. Without the H, baby. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> it's humble. You can't, you can't say. It. Well, you say it when you, when you say humble. That's one way, but humble pie is different. Nope, it's not. It's not different. It's the same word and it's the same meaning. That's and funny. I watch these crazy. Uh, I have this bad habit of of watching these crazy preachers on on YouTube. Um, oh, I know they're just nut nut balls. You know that, but there's this one guy He's in Alabama and he, uh, man, he just, uh, he's, you know, he wears a long black trench coat and he's got hair like Billy Ray Cyrus, man. He's got long black hair and he's got a beard and everything, man. He wears black and, uh, he carries a Gandalf stick on stage with him and it's just the craziest stuff. Never opens the Bible, but he tells you what God says. Right. And God Mm -hmm. is talking to him in his ear, but yet he never opens the Bible. So, and he makes $43 million. He's worth $43 million. I don't know how, but he says mature and humble all the time. And I go, (laughs) so anyway, you brought it up and I'm like, that guy says those things all the time. So. Well, now you'll never, you'll never not notice it, you know. Oh and, gosh, I and know. The problem is, is just doing sorry, the wife's stomach's growing. Wife's okay. turned in. I love uh, wife. She's awesome. Uh, and the thing is, is I don't hold it against anybody that does that. Right. I just know, I just know the things that 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 perk my little ears up. That I'm like, oh man, that got me. <laughs> That well, was it's a, awesome. It's a colloquialism, right? It's a it's a regional thing for people to do that. Um, I don't know where. It, I'd love to know the origins of things like this. Well, where did someone start saying humble and uh, mature? Where where did that start? I will well, never feel, know. But I feel like it comes from like some royalty thing, I mean, especially like words like mature mm-hmm. would come from like uh, like it it would be the way a king said it. Yeah, or something, and that's why that's why it was adopted because it sounds more regal, <laughs> you know. It sounds more. Uh, I love sophisti- to hear people, it. Sounds more sophisticated. I love when people who who don't speak sophisticatedly. I don't think that's a word, but um, I love when people who don't typically speak like that try to speak like that because then it just <laughs> sounds 
all wrong. And and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It leads into that kind of stuff that just drives me bananas. And I'm like, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Whatever. <sighs> but yeah, that's that's good. I love those words, man. That's that's exactly what I grew up with. I think that's funny. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of other ones too, but I can't think of them right off the right off the. Oh, I know. Top of my head. But yeah, I can't either. I was going to tell you instead of instead of watching the Oscars, I watched, and I think everybody should watch this, Bad Vegan on Netflix. Oh, we already did. We already watched it. You already watched it. Oh man, how incredible was that? Dude, it, we have talked about this over, especially because of the past year that we've been through. Mm-hmm. It's like the year of the con man. It, for the early dude. Like year of the narcissist, man. It, it's been like, <laughs> and I say that, that it's all coming out yeah. this year. But some of these things have been going on since like forever, forever really. But the, mm-hmm. these more noticeable ones, man, it's like, God, everybody's a narcissist con man. And it's scary that these yeah. people get away with this stuff for so long. I don't see how. And, and I understand people can be manipulated and brainwashed, and I, I get it. But I, how could you not see that this guy was a science fiction fanboy? Like sending her to Rome and everything. Just you got to go wait in Rome because something big's going. You got to go have a meeting. And well, this see, that, and that's, the, that's uh, the wild thing about it. Gosh, like, man. Well, the the bad vegan is way more like, sheesh. But it was wild. I, well, and we've talked about how like it, it it's no fault of our own, mm-hmm. but. I can't remember what movie I heard this from or or where I heard it from, but people were like, people will believe what you tell them, you know, it's true. And so when you go into an idea of trusting someone and you think you've known them or, or, you know, the, the, the credentials that you have line up and you're like, okay. And you continue. and, And the thing is, is until they're exposed or busted, you may not know you're being lied to her fib you know right. and so then you feel dumb you know that's the thing that we laugh about the most is like oh we'd never join a cult right <laughs> and then you spend the past year like we have of like ah oh, we were lied yeah. we've been lied to and manipulated over mm-hmm. and over again but we didn't know it because we trusted the words that were coming out of right an evil person's mouth <laughs> and so you're like yep. uh who's really to blame here I, you're right. We're talking Will Smith or Chris Rock, you know. <laughs> Hi there. We just want to say thanks for listening to Hump Day Conversations with Jeff and Linz. We really appreciate it. We want to give a super good shout out to Jacob Boyd with Post Retro for his invaluable guidance as we put this thing together. Go listen to his Super Swell podcast, Talking Indies in My Undies, wherever you find podcasts. We also want to give a super duper extra shout out to our founding Patreon patron, John Thomas Oaks. JT is part of the We Feel Ya tier, and by being so, we'll get this shout out as well as written mentions in our video versions and social medias, and we will read and respond to his letter email once per month in a special extra episode. You can find JT every Sunday night at 7 p.m. on John Branion's Starving Comics Quarantine Show on YouTube. If you'd like to join JT in the Hump Club, go visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com forward slash hump DC. That's H-U-M-P-D-C. Don't forget that a new episode of our little show drops every Wednesday at 12, 12 a.m. with one or both of us in the chat of the YouTube premiere, which you can find at the Daydreamer Pictures channel. You can also find the audio versions of this show on Spotify and Apple iTunes podcasts. We hope we can help you get over hump day with some laughs and whatnot. Be sure to slap the like buttons wherever and whenever possible. Share and subscribe.